Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Gina Bianca podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Hannah Noel Peterson, one of my closest, closest friends. Hannah used to work with me at GBH back in the day, and there we became extremely close friends, and we stay, still remain friends to this day. Hannah left the beauty industry to pursue her dream of being a musician, and it's a pleasure every day to watch her follow her dreams and it's a pleasure every time I get to see her perform. I love Hannah's story because she really did drop everything and follow her dreams. And I know during these difficult times, some of us may not be returning to the beauty industry. I know that some of us may have other goals we want to step into. I know that sometimes it's really scared to follow our heart. And the reason I wanted Hannah to speak with us today is because she did just that and she's living her truth, living her dream. And it's not easy every day, but I know that it's worth it. So this interview is very special to me. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I'd love to welcome Hannah Noel Peterson. Welcome to the Gina Bianca podcast. Hannah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Gina. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Me too. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. And I want to just start the podcast by you introducing yourself to everybody. Let them know where they could find you. Let them know how you got into music and just give yourself like a bird's eye view of Hannah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, my name is Hannah. Uh, Hannah Noel Peterson, my full name. Um, I was born and raised in Connecticut until 2017. I decided to move to New Jersey. I literally dropped everything uh, to join this band that I now, uh, it's my full-time job. Uh, it's called Garden State Radio. Uh, you can find us at gardenstateradio.net, our Instagram at Garden State Radio. My Instagram is at Hannah is Noel, which I could explain that a little bit later too. And yeah, just uh, so yeah, I just, I just sing full-time and, and have fun with a bunch of people. <laughs> I love it. And you get, you guys sing everything. So like yeah. if you were to go to one of your shows, what are like three songs that would come on? Uh, let's see. It's really anything that's on the radio today, as far as, you know, we do stuff from the eighties. Uh, I mean, Mr. Brightside killers. Everybody loves that song. We got some post Malone. I know you're a big post Malone fan. Um, gosh, there's just so we do even do Fleetwood Mac. Like there's just so many varieties of music we do. It's really fun. I love it. And then who's your favorite? I'm, I mean, listen, we both share a love for Lady Gaga. Love her so much. Um, I still am not over the fact that you got to work with her on that set because that is just, I'm still <laughs> amazing. I'm shook. I'm, I was so shook. I thought it was a joke. I was like, no, there's, I was like, this is amazing. I thought it was a joke too. <laughs> I love it. I'm so happy for you though. Um, but my, probably my absolute biggest inspiration above Miss Gaga would be, um, uh, Haley Williams of Paramore. Um, she's like, I don't know. She's, there's something about her that I think you have the same connection with Lady Gaga that I probably have with uh, Haley Williams. There's just, she feels like my soul sister. Like our birthdays are two days apart. Um, and we just like everything that she writes about, I'm like, this is my whole life. Like, why aren't we, you know, best friends waiting Miss Haley. <laughs> I love that so much. And I love that you're not afraid to be like obsessed with musicians. I mean, oh, like, yeah. I, I'm like super fan of Gaga. I'm like super fan of Posty. And like, I'm not afraid to be like, I fucking love them. And like, exactly. And like, pay a lot to go to a show and like buy crazy oh, yeah. tickets or like, just like, if I'm at a bar or a club, like, I'm going to ask for the song to be played. Or if I'm exactly. at karaoke, like, that's my song. Like, I love being like unabashedly obsessed with people and like yeah. having mentors and like the thing is is like I was talking with one of my friends and we're listening to Post Malone and he's like he's just like us he yeah isn't that the craziest right thing yeah and and it's like he's on his grind right now and like so are you yeah and it's like we're and the thing is is like I was one person away from Lady Gaga when I met Frederick at the BTC show yeah 
one person away from her. So when you think about like how close you are to people and like, even if people are famous and you have like these big, huge dreams, like it is possible to meet them. And like, yeah. it is, like the more upset, like I, I, I always say like be obsessed or be average. It's like a Grant Cardone quote. Yeah. Listen, all of the crazy obsessed fans that people make fun of online, they always get the best shit. Always. <laughs> There's like always like Halsey, for example, she just has like a group of 10 super fans that she like personally knows and she just invites them to shit all the time. Be obsessed with your favorite artists, people. <laughs> I love it. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, awesome. All right. Well, let's talk about how you got into music and when did you, how did you get into music in the beginning? Like how long have you been singing for and uh, how long have you been doing it professionally? So let's see. I have been wanting to sing for as long as I can remember. Um, now, I haven't, I really wasn't open with my singing probably until I was in high school. I've always had the dream of wanting to sing and, and since I was a little girl, but um, yeah, when I was in high school, I did a couple of coffee houses, uh, which if anybody doesn't know what that is it's kind of like a little private talent show within your coffee house uh they call it coffee house i'm sorry within your high school um they call it coffee house because it's supposed to have that type of a setting whatever and people really showcase their talent so i started doing that when i was in high school with a couple of friends of mine always did a paramore song did you post this recently and do misery business because i just watched this it was it was ignorance Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was ignorant. So, ignorance uh, is your new best friend. That one, yeah, yes. Oh, exactly. So, oh my God, I love it so much. Um, yeah, so I did that song. Um, I did Crush, Crush, Crush. Um, and from there, I didn't really... It's It's funny because I didn't really push my music dream as hard as, like, you probably would think that I would have or should have. And I think that most of that was because music was such a therapeutic thing to me. It still is. Um, that I never wanted to, I never wanted to kind of like lose that, you know, that passion for music. So I kind of laid low. I played my piano for a couple of years. And then when I was 18, 19, um, uh, I met, well, I moved in with my friend Farah. Uh, her father is very big into the live music scene in Connecticut. His name's Tony. Um, and he started doing sounds for some local bands. I went along with him and I just kind of learned the ropes of, I guess, the cover band business. And I met a band, Juice Box, that needed a singer. And that was my first band went from there to another band and then four months into that band here i am in garden state radio in new jersey which is just the craziest thing i never would have thought that i'd be here but here i am i love that so you were doing hair during this time i remember i met you yes. across the street you were working at the grocery store yeah. and i remember uh, i remember walking in there and you had long blonde hair and you had your paul mitchell hoodie on and i was just like oh my god fresh i still meat. have it yeah, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, fresh meat, fresh meat. And I was just like, hey, what's up? Like, you know, just like whatever. And then I saw you like a couple of weeks I was later obsessed. Your, your hair was chopped. And I was just like, oh my God, she's fully committed. And I like, I was obsessed with you. I was like automatically. And, and you ended up working at GBH and doing the um, the singing and everything as your side hustle. Yeah. And I remember it was like, you were working really hard. And it, yeah. was, GBH, it was a lot. GBH was also on my dream board in cosmetology school, by the way. I think Krista ended up telling you that too. But yeah, it, you were on my, yeah, I loved you. I was obsessed with you before <laughs> you even knew that I was obsessed with you. Um, so I was obsessed with you though, because I was like stalking you at the grocery store. <laughs> and I was stalking you when you came into the grocery store. And I'm like, I'm like, that's Gina. Oh my God. I'm like, she I has, love you. It was like, I was like, she has 11,000 followers on Instagram. Fast forward to now. I'm like, okay, <laughs> 5 million. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, oh it was, it was pretty crazy. Um, it was, ex I remember like the night after my first show and I was beat. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, people do this. People do this all of the time. And now that's the position I'm in and I can just like kind of do two shows in a row without little sleep and, and not really think about it. It's crazy. Well, you're in great shape. 
Thank like, you. You look, you look great. Like Thank you, you always are beautiful and stunning, but I noticed since yeah. you started singing and since you started like really working in this business, your body is just like working for you. Thank you. It's like you have to build that, you have to build that strength to that's, be able to perform. That's really what it is. And I kind of noticed that that shifted myself physically too, is like, I have these crazy calf muscles, like, if just from jumping, just from everybody jump, let's go. Da, 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 da. And it's always, that's just my life. So I get, I like to tell people, I get like three hours of exercise, three nights a week, like consistently. Um, so that's kind of like my routine, I guess. <laughs> I don't really now, do anything else other than that. I have a question for you. And this is just like a side, I know I gave you like a list of questions we were going to chat about, but this is just a side question. And, and, in the hairdressing business, you know, we work certain number of hours per week. Do you work the same? Do you work like a regular schedule during the week or are, do I you love feel this like, question. yeah, like, what do you like? I feel like as the amount of work you put in for a show is like two days of work or something like that. Like what yeah. is, what is your workflow? So our job is also pretty seasonal. Um, it, it, the amount of shows during the week does depend on the time of year, usually during the summer. I'd say between May and September of last year, we played 85 shows alone. Um, and a lot of that ranges, you know, between like Thursday to Sunday. Uh, with a couple of shows in between on Mondays and Tuesdays. But Monday and Tuesday shows are awesome during the summer because we start at seven o'clock and we're done at nine and I'm home by 10. Like it's a, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, in the winter, we average about two to three shows a week. Um, sometimes we've supplemented uh, some income with like acoustic work uh, during the week that Mike, Ryan and myself would do. Um, but yeah, we, we're all, you know, having a business is a 24 hour job, uh, you know, just like any business and you're always on, um, just making sure that clients are happy and clubs are happy and you're getting your content out there. And so you're performing and managing, uh, an average show day, I would say is probably 14 to 16 hours. Damn. So you're, you're working full time in this. You're like, you're like the real deal, like full time. It's not just a yeah. side gig anymore. Is it, do yeah. you love it? Like, is it what you wanted? Yeah, I do love it. And I, I love it. And I know I would never want to do anything else. I'm so grateful to have this time to step back and really appreciate that too. Um, I've kind of had this time to evaluate, you know, like where I am and what I want in my life. And I, realize that one of the biggest things that helps me release my anxiety is music. So I'm definitely missing um, being on stage and, and seeing people for sure. And that's the beauty of being an artist, you know, like what your art, when it's therapeutic for you, like your work can be so amazing. And, yeah. and some things too, is if you don't take care of yourself and have self care, you can even resent that. It could be the complete opposite. And sometimes yeah. I get like that. Like I love our industry so much, the beauty industry. Like I love that industry so much. And sometimes when I give, 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 and I don't take care of myself, I like will hate to do hair or yeah. I will like not even want to like, I will not even want to do anything. And, and it, that's the biggest thing. So my question to you is like, what do you do like every day? Like what's a habit or ritual that you do that helps you keep it in the passion part of your life and not get like in the work or the mundane with it? Yeah. So I actually just had to revisit my relationship with music too. Cause I kind of fell into a, uh, it's very easy to give into like the, the evil side of any industry or the caddy side of any industry. And it's really easy to kind of lose your direction of why you started something in the first place. So something that I do every day, especially with music is, you know, the biggest thing is I have to, I have to just listen to music throughout the day. doesn't matter what it is. I need to have some kind of a sound on. I love to dance alone in my kitchen. I absolutely love it. Um, I think that I am a fantastic dancer and I think that it's a, it's, you are. Thank you. <laughs> um, other people seeing me might think otherwise, but, um, 
it's just it, to get my body moving and have that physical release of stress kind of helps and especially with music like you know music goes through seasons just like we do and we kind of like are drawn to music based upon whatever season we're going through in in our lives so i think that really listening maybe you know really listening to that music and kind of you know really getting in touch with with you know maybe why you're listening to that or like what is it about it that's bringing you this comfort or this release and like just just really take care of yourself and just do things that really make you happy has been my biggest thing and just staying connected to it it sounds like just like yeah. really staying in tune with like why you're dr- i love that yeah yeah and just and, like staying in tune with yourself yeah and that's that's the biggest thing that i've done and and even with this whole covid-19 quarantine happening um i've realized how much i kind of just let my a uh, self care go and now that i'm taking that time to have that self care with myself i'm starting to appreciate things that i may have lost the appreciation for you know at another point in my life and um so yeah i'm very grateful to have that now love that so amazing thank you here's <laughs> another question now do you here i'm going to give you two questions okay. the, do you get stage fright and All the time. are you more nervous doing hair? Like I remember when you were like first doing hair out of school and you would get pretty nervous in consultations and like you would pretty second guess yourself here and there. Do you get more nervous singing or doing hair and do you get stage fright? So I get, I definitely get way more nervous doing hair. And I, I hope that I could say this and it doesn't make anybody upset. If you've gone into the hair industry and you have found that it's not working for you and that there's another dream that you'd like to pursue it's completely okay i have found that for me i love doing hair because i love the art of doing hair i didn't necessarily jive well with the environment of doing hair of a sal- being in a salon is just not my thing and that's okay um i think that it's very easy for for people to feel like you know guilty about something like that so i just would like to tell everybody that i'm living proof um hair was a very big trigger for me anxiety wise and i didn't even realize that until recently um and it's been how many years since i have three years was my anniversary with garden state radio um and yeah even what what was the question again i lost my brain i'm sorry um, do you get stage fright? But, oh, stage fright. And, and it, I'm, I just like love, I just love your whole journey because I know it will help a lot of people. And you're absolutely right when it comes to like, if you do have a dream and hair will always be there. It really And will. I wanted to just add this in, like, I wasn't very supportive of you going. A lot of people. Um, I was pretty. But it's okay. I was pretty mad. Um, you were you, your life, what you dropped everything. So there was a lot of people telling, you no, and mm-hmm. there was every reason to stay doing what you were doing. Yeah. Like there was every reason to stay. And that's why, like, I, I like, just think you have so many, like so much balls and like, I can just relate to you and respect you so much. Cause I've taken risks like that where people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. But you just know it's the right thing. Yeah. And, um, I just have a lot of respect for you. And it's not telling everyone, Hey, drop your whole life and, and leave and you know, whatever. But like, of there course. comes a point, there comes a point where destiny is destiny and you have yeah. to take a bet on yourself. There really does come a point where you get so uncomfortable in the life that you're not supposed to be living that you have no other choice other than to transform into the person that you're supposed to be. I mean, when I left and I transitioned from Connecticut to New Jersey, it was probably the absolute most uncomfortable few months to a year of my life. And and what I realize now is that if I stayed where I was, if none of this happened, if Garden State Radio didn't happen for me, 
I mean, I tell Ryan all the time, Garden State Radio saved my life because I was just not in a good place. I wasn't happy in the relationship I was in. I wasn't happy where I was working and it had nothing to do with, you know, you obviously, it's just not where I was supposed to be. I remember like even trying to help you through things and it was just clear that it was just, it just wasn't like, there was nothing we could really fix. Like it was more, there was definitely things we could fix always. Like there's always ways you can get better. Yeah. All of of that stuff. But it like, it was just like, like, you know when you just don't want to be there yeah like, when don't somebody wanna, doesn't mm-hmm. it just doesn't fit and like I remember and I want to say this because if you've ever if you're afraid to to follow your dream if you're afraid of what people might think or if you're afraid of letting people down Hannah and I's relationship is closer than ever now yeah because of getting through something like that mm-hmm. and the reason I was not supportive of her I wasn't I was more like yeah okay like good luck like or bye like you're leaving me and I was really mad and yeah. really sad and that reason wasn't because I didn't want Hannah to do well right and if people don't support you it's not because it's like I hate you I don't want you to do well people want to protect themselves of course from hurt yeah they want to prevent people from leaving their lives yeah you know what I mean? And all of those, like things, like if people don't treat you the right way and if people aren't as supportive, know that most of the times people's behavior comes from a positive place. And it's yeah. not, not everything is meant to like hurt. Most actions from human beings are meant to protect, prevent, or provide. Yeah. And though, and you know, going back like to my past behavior as a salon owner, very young salon owner, and, and seeing people go through these life stages and like your story is just my favorite. I don't care. Sorry, okay. everybody. Yours is my favorite <laughs> because it was just something that like it it will inspire so many to just follow your heart. And yeah. I just, I love that. And if you are going through transition and change right now, just know that like, what's the worst that could happen? What if everybody hates me? Well, if everybody hates me, I know that they just don't understand my path because my path is mine and mine, mine alone. And I know that one day they'll understand. And I know that they're mad or they're upset only because they love me and care about yeah. me and, and don't want to lose me. And, and-, and if you say that it might make it easier to take that next step, you guys. Exactly. And, and that's, that is something that's also helped me too, especially through that process. And that's exactly kind of how I thought, you know, when you and I, you kind of, I mean, you bounced back like a week later when we posted a million reasons that cover, but I, I mean, I totally understood why, why you reacted the way that you did. And, and I think that should just go for, I guess, everybody in any industry is that anytime anybody is against something like it's not always your fault you know like it's not if you're if you're doing something that makes you happy and somebody doesn't agree with it it's not really your problem you know like that's there's something inside of them that is not that either doesn't want to see you grow or doesn't understand it um, and all you can really do is hope one day that they do come to terms with it, you know, like kind of like what you said. Yeah. And just like growing from it and, and you can't let those things hold you back. And no, I just, I love it. So thank you for being so honest and open, sharing all of that. Of course. Um, what do you do for fun? Is music your whole life? Do you and, do you and Ryan do anything for fun? What do you guys do? So gosh, so I do, I do a bunch of we like never have the time to do anything during the summer. So what I like to do is I like to like DIY, like create it. Like I hung these like roses on my wall that you could see behind you or behind me. Um, but I, I just love, I really like interior decorating. Um, I've really taken like time to just, you know, make my house a home and like kind of make it a sanctuary and like I painted like some benches that I have outside I listen to music all of the time I do like to cook um I like being home I don't know I'm a really big homebody I love I love all of my neighbors so dearly like we all hang out all the time um like my neighbor just like dropped off you know some tulips on my doorstep the other day just because just because she's like here you go just I wanted to get you guys some it's just 
Yeah, so we, we really, I mean, I live right by the water too, so I like to walk around the beach and things like that, you know. I love that. I love being home too. Like, it's my favorite thing. It's the best. It's like, what do you want to do? And I'm just like, nothing. Stay home. (laughs) I want to play Play Animal Crossing. Yeah, (laughs) just playing video games, exactly. (laughs) Mario Kart. Yes, I love Mario Kart. Um, All right, now you said you're always too busy to do everything. So how do you make time to do it? Do you guys like schedule it or you just like go with the flow? Um, So I like to, I like to kind of do both. Like Ryan and I, since we also work together, um, we found that it's very important, not only for us, but also for everybody else in the band's personal life. Um, We have like a set few work days during the week. Uh, So we will have like Sundays and Mondays off. And then Tuesday through Saturday is usually when, you know, we would either go to our warehouse or we would go to our office or our studio, record some covers and just kind of keep our hands in something. And so you guys work together and you don't get sick of each other? No. So, so... I have to say that Ryan and I are very lucky to have the relationship that we have. And it's not perfect. You know, no relationship is perfect, um, especially when you're working with each other. But I think that we have been very lucky to, I, we just kind of like understand each other's boundaries, um, especially when he's working and he's setting up the show and I'm with them. You know, they, he gets into such a work mode that, you know, like I understand, like that's his time. And we just kind of give each other the space when we need it. And he goes and he works at our wear shop during the uh, warehouse during the day. And it's, we have a really good balance of personal time and seeing each other and being alone. Yeah. Amazing. All right. My last question is how do you balance a man? manage it all what advice can you give to someone who feels burnt out or drained so I I feel we gave them so many like so much through this but is there any less advice that you can give to somebody during this time maybe something you can give them to just take it with to like take care of themselves I think that if you are if you find yourself in some point of your life where you feel like you're either at rock bottom or you're burnt out I think it's really important to sit with yourself and really analyze, you know, is it something that's around you? Is it a person that's in your life? Um, And if it kind of comes for me, it came back to the same thing of, I really just needed to take care of myself. Um, And once I started to take care of myself and just my mental health and really took the time to, you know, go to therapy and just speak gentler to myself in my head and, um, not put so much pressure on myself doing that and taking that time to take care of myself has helped all of my relationships like my relationship with ryan my work relationship it kind of helps bring back the the motivation and determination that i had once kind of lost from feeling burnt out so i would just say self-care is really important and there's a reason why everybody says it it's because it actually works And that's my advice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks so much, Hannah. I love your story. I love watching you grow. I love watching you succeed. I just, every, like, I love you. Every, like, I literally feel the same. Every benchmark, every benchmark that I'm like, Hannah, like, I'll always be in the crowd cheering for you. I'll always be the same. you and loving you and promoting you to everybody because I just think that you have so much to offer and so much value. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. And one more time, just let them know where to find you so they can follow you. Yes. First of all, I just want to say the same thing to you that I will always be your cheerleader. Um, You have, I've watched you go through an amazing transformation over the last couple of years. And I just like, I loved you so much back then and I love you so much now. And you're just this amazing and beautiful person. And I know everybody listening will agree, but 
if where you can find us, uh, you know, my name is Hannah Peterson. You can find me on Instagram at Hannah is Noel. Um, Noel is like if we would ever do some original music, that's kind of the name that I would use. So where you can find us is uh, GardenStateRadio.net. That's our website. And our Instagram at GardenStateRadio. Uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook.com slash GardenStateRadio. And we have a YouTube channel. We actually just uploaded a bunch of fun uh, acoustic covers. Love it. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Love you. Love you, too. Thank you for listening to the Gina Bianca podcast.